Oh, so this morning, I thought I'd talk a little bit about our Genesis text, and that was a while ago. That was the first reading that we heard. So just to recap, Jacob is walking alone, and then he comes across a man, and then they wrestle all night, and then Jacob doesn't give up, and so the man blesses Jacob with a new name, Israel. Now, this story is one of the more familiar ones in the Genesis text and in Jacob's life history. And one of the favorite things that churches like to do is we like to speculate who is this person that Jacob wrestled with. The text doesn't identify this person. Uh, so this is our task, I guess. We get together and we think, who could it possibly be? Could it be an adversary? I mean, at this point in time in the Genesis text, Jacob is fleeing from his brother Esau, who said that he would like him to come see him. And Jacob remembers how he wasn't so nice to his brother the last time he saw him. And his brother even said, I would like to kill you the last time they saw each other. So he's fleeing from his brother. So is this who he's wrestling with? Someone from his brother's nation? I don't know. Another thing we like to think about is maybe this is an angel. Maybe this is someone sent from God to wrestle with Jacob. I mean, who else would have authority to rename Jacob Israel and become the founder of the Israelite nation? And some have even gone so far as to say this person that Jacob is wrestling with is in fact God. I mean, at the end, we hear about how Jacob saw God face to face and lived. Is God who this person is? And if so, what does that mean for us as a people who believe in the incarnation and Jesus becoming human and God becoming human? Was God a God of incarnation long before Jesus? Did God become human to wrestle with Jacob? But the fact of the matter remains that we don't know who this man is. And I think sometimes we can become so absorbed with that mystery, with figuring out who this person that wrestled with Jacob is, that we can forget the point of the story. Identity is not the point of today's story. Rather, tenacity. Tenacity and faithfulness are the point of today's story. Jacob gets hurt in his wrestling uh, through the night. They wrestle all night. He doesn't give up, but he leaves that place limping. It is not a fight or a wrestling that is all in good fun. This is hard, difficult, physically demanding, and even impairing wrestling. And how does Jacob win? Does he pin the other person to the ground? No. Jacob wins by not giving up. The simple fact that he didn't give up and the other person did give up, that is why Jacob won. And sometimes we need reminding that victory just looks like not giving up. Sometimes it's not more elegant than that. Sometimes it's not more heroic than that. Sometimes it's not more picturesque than that. We live and we operate in a culture that tells us that winning is a good thing it romanticizes women winning. Every time we watch a movie, there is a winner, there is a loser, and we would like to be the winner. And in Jacob's story, we are reminded that winning is an illusion. That in fact, in this world so filled with brokenness and doubt and confusion and impairment, there is no such thing as winning. There is rather just struggling. And sometimes victory looks like just not giving up. Sometimes victory looks like leaving that place limping. Sometimes victory looks like holding on against all odds. Every one of us in this room has wrestled with something. Probably today, probably this week, we have all come to this place wrestling with something. And sometimes there is no winning when it comes to these things. If we come bearing scars or relational brokenness, or maybe we have addictions, or maybe we find ourselves in abusive relationships, no matter what it is that we're wrestling with, sometimes there is no such thing as winning. Sometimes there's just holding on for one more day. 
Jacob gives us permission to call this a victory. Sometimes holding on is all we can do. Sometimes wrestling through the night with God is all we can do. Sometimes wrestling is only granted when God helps us to wrestle. Jacob struggles alone on the road, and sometimes when we are wrestling with things, we too are alone. Sure, we can share our struggles and our burdens with those around us, but no one knows what it's like to wrestle with that thing better than you do. No one can understand what you are going through like you do. And so we wrestle alone. And it can be a hard thing. And we come away from that wrestling bearing scars. We come away from that wrestling exhausted. Wrestling is not an easy thing to do. We know from Jacob's story that Jacob is not a model of morality. Jacob cheated his brother out of his birthright. Jacob cheated his brother out of his father's blessing. Jacob is not necessarily the most moral of characters in the Bible. And yet Jacob is a model of faithfulness. Jacob clings to God and clings to God's promises all through the night, never gives up, despite no chance of quote-unquote winning. Jacob holds on for nothing more than nothing else to do. Jacob will not give up. And so too are we called to cling to God and to wrestle with God, even to confront God in ways that change us until we hear that blessing. Until we are transformed, we are called to not give up until we hear from God, this is your name. You are blessed and you did not give up. But sometimes that's all we can do. Sometimes when we are struggling or wrestling with something and we go to God in prayer, sometimes God feels far away. Sometimes it's hard to believe the promises that God speaks to us that we will be forever loved when we don't even love ourselves. Sometimes it is hard to imagine that God will stay with us when God feels so far away, and yet we cling as Jacob clung to that wrestler. We cling to God. We cling to this faith that we profess and sometimes not feel. We cling and cling and never let go until we are victorious and God gives us our blessing and we feel transformed. I'm sure in that night of struggling, Jacob did not always feel that he was struggling with God. Sometimes we hold God up in a way that says that we cannot have a confrontation with God. We can't be angry with God. Jacob shows us differently. We can confront God. We in our broken selves don't understand God, and that's okay. That's okay because we struggle anyways. We struggle through our doubts, we struggle in our questions, and in that struggling, we come out the stronger, though maybe limping a little bit. We come out blessed and transformed because we have struggled with God and struggled with God's people. Jacob does not model morality for us. Rather, Jacob models for us what it takes to be a faithful person of God. What it takes is just clinging and it's not a pretty picture. It's not a picturesque moment in a, in a movie. It's not a climax. It's something that we go through our entire lives. That struggling doesn't last one night when it comes to living lives of faith. That struggling lasts our entire living lives. And yet through it all, we know that God struggles with us. And so we carry on. We hold on. And in this week, as you leave this place... And as you continue to struggle with whatever it is that brought you through these doors this morning, remember that God is struggling with you. And we can only continue to struggle. We can only hold on with God's help. And in that tenacity, we will be rewarded. We will be transformed. Amen.